Hey y'all, it's Base Kato and I am back with another video. So today I was scrolling on my Reddit and I came across this GQ article, which is pretty interesting. So it says Nike files a sneaker trademark lawsuit against Bait. So before we get into the article, let's go ahead and roll the intro. Roll the intro and let's go ahead and get into the article. So again, it says Nike files sneaker trademark lawsuit against Bape. The sportswear giant is calling out the cult streetwear brand's longtime designs, deeming them verbatim copies of popular Nike silhouettes. So this is written on January 27th. So it says the American sportswear giant Nike filed a trademark infringement lawsuit against Japanese cult favorite street brand, a bathing ape, known colloquially as Bait, in a New York court this week, saying the company's current footwear business revolves around copying Nike's iconic designs. And let me just add my little two cents. I'm not gonna lie, like when I seen Bape, which I feel like I seen Bape when I was like in middle school, I remember thinking that Bape was collab with Nike because a lot of their stuff looks similar to Nike, but I feel like Bape is a little bit more fly. Like I've always wanted to buy something from Bape. So, and even still, according to court filings shared by Routers, the suit reflects what Nike sees as nearly 20 years of tension between the two companies, beginning when Bape first began selling its often candy-colored footwear in the United States in 2005. The document includes a full-page chart with photos comparing a handful of both brands' most popular shoes, a bathing ape's Bapestas next to Nike's Air Force Ones, Bape skate studs alongside Nike Dunks and court studs adjacent to Air Jordan 1s, with detailed shots highlighting specific design elements including eyelet and sole ridge patterns. The filing also marks the second major trademark infringement claim that a multinational sportswear company has brought against a relatively smaller scale brand in Manhattan Southern District Court this month. And here, let me go ahead and pause right there. So with these designs, let me go ahead and pull up the designs. So basically, this is a part of the lawsuit, this image right here, that Nike is basically saying that they, they're copying these particular shoes. And I'm not gonna lie, when I look at these photos, I'm like, yeah, because if I seen the Bapestas, I would have thought like, are those Air Force Ones? But I would know based off of the symbol that they're bait. So me as a consumer, I would think that it's kind of like a Nike collab, you know? Like if I didn't know about shoes, which I'm one of those people, it's like I'm still learning about shoes, but the average person would have thought that this is a Nike slash bait collab in my opinion. But I'm not gonna lie, like when I look at these photos, like the bait, the baits go hard. The bait shoes go hard, but you can't lie, like this is definitely a straight replica of the Nike products. Down to the stitching and everything, it's pretty much the same. See, I, I don't blame Nike for bringing up this lawsuit. Until recently, the Nike suit reads, Bape's sale of infringing footwork in the United States was de minimis and inconsistent. For 15 years, the presence of Bape's infringing footwear in the United States resembled the famous whack arcade game. Infringing products appeared and then disappeared from the United States market for years. Bape opened stores in the United States and then shuttered them a few years later. And Bape was purchased by a Hong Kong fashion conglomerate that shifted Bape's focus to markets outside the United States. In the suit, Nike concedes that prior to 2021, the number of infringing pairs Bape sold was never more than a small fraction of the millions of pairs Nike sells annually. And said the company approached Bape in 2009 about footwear similarities, after which Bape purportedly agreed to redesign its flagship Bape's the sneaker. But in 2021, Nike says Bape reverted back to the original copycat design. Bape's copying is always has been unacceptable to Nike, and because Bape's infringements have recently grown to become a significant danger to Nike's rights, Nike must act now, the suit reads. This is a careful timeline covering a key segment of the brand's history. 
Legendary streetwear designer Naigo first founded a bathing ape in Tokyo in 1993 and in the mid-aughts, the brand found its way onto the shelves of Supreme's blockbuster Lafayette flagship store and into the closets of big names like Pharrell, Yee, and Pusha T. Nigos or Nigos reach made him one of streetwear's most influential godfathers. He and Pharrell went on to found the brand's Billionaire Boys Club and Ice Cream together, and he became a key mentor to the late designer Virgil Abloh. Nigo sold Bape's parent company, Nowhere Co., to a Hong Kong-based holding company called IT in 2011, and a decade later, in 2021, he became the new artistic director of the Japanese luxury label Kenzo. I realized I'd done pretty much everything you can do in the world of streetwear, the designer told GQ last year. I realized I needed a new challenge. In the sportswear economy, there's always been a thin line between the output of a mega brand like Nike and a cult favorite company like Bape, which has allowed for plenty of cross permeation through the last few decades. In 2005, the year Bape first rolled out its footwear in the US, Chris Gibbs, owner of the influential Los Angeles-based streetwear boutique Union LA, collaborated with Nike on a sneaker, designing a colorful take on the high-top Air Force 180s. Streetwear was a rebellion against the fashion industry at large, it was typically only played in blacks and naives. So I wanted the colors to be in contrast to that, Gibbs told GQ about the shoe last year. I took the camo from my favorite jacket and changed the colors around to be more playful. It was probably inspired by Bape, who was doing a lot of that at the time. And alright, so pretty much that is the end of the article. So pretty much I already know what happened when Bape came back around and came up with the same type of copycat design in 2021. Around that time, I did read on another article that Bape was planning on expanding their production again in the US. Basically, they're trying to take over Nike. This is why Nike was like, no, we're shutting this down right now. Because even in the article, when they said Bape was getting popular, Nike had to shut them down in 2009. They didn't, um, I don't think they uh, brought a lawsuit against Bape in 2009, but they kind of gave them a slap on the wrist because back then, Bape was also trying to expand their production. So that's why Bape kind of moved out of the US and back over to their home country. So basically, the reason why Nike at the end of the day is bringing this lawsuit is because they see Bape as legitimate competition to their brand. Now, will Bape ever surpass Nike? No, because Nike, at the end of the day, they represent something that's way bigger than Bape. But I'm not gonna lie, as far as Bape's just clothing and the shoes, it's fire. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I like Bape's design. So I can see why Nike is now starting to put out more colorful, more creative designs to kind of help keep up with the trends of streetwear. I am interested in seeing how this case goes because at the end of the day, Bape definitely copied Nike. Like, I don't care what anybody says. it Their designs look just alike. And every time I see Bape, I think of Nike. And it causes a lot of confusion. So I can see why this comes down to a trademark type lawsuit. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bape is found guilty for a trademark infringement. And I wouldn't be surprised too if Bape is ordered to give back at least a percentage of their profits to Nike. Especially after all those years, it's been like 20 years. But I believe statute of limitation is 20 years when it comes to trademark. Um, and copyright type things. Again, I may have to do, I will have to do more research on that because I don't know that for sure, but when I was reading this article, I remember somewhere saying 20 years. But anyways, you guys, that is all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!